This is a video really for uh, my friend's son who was uh, asking me about the problem he had with his car headlamps. He, uh, he rang me up, it was the last night, and said, um, I've got a problem with uh, one of my headlamps has failed in one side of the car. He said, I've uh, driven along, the light just went out, so he assumed the bulb had blown. Uh, so he put a new bulb in it, uh, still no headlamp, and he's uh, checked the fuse, and the fuse is okay. Um, he said he's had a mate come round. He knows a bit about electrics. He said, and uh, he's checked the uh, checked the connection, and he said there's 12 volts on the supply. He said, but uh, what I don't understand is when I plug it into the bulb, the bulb doesn't light up. So I'm going to try and explain this for those sort of uh, a bit new to uh, electronics or even to automotive repairs and people who still actually repair their cars themselves, which is a nice thing to see. Um, this is my example of the situation. Uh, this red terminal here is the positive of your, your, for example, your low beam. Let's presume we're working on a low beam. This is my low beam bulb, this Festoon. It's a 12 volt bulb. It's got 12 volts coming through on the supply here. And if you see, if I connect up to the meter, uh, you see the flute's reading 12.4 volts, 12.29, 12.3 volts. Okay, so we got our 12 volts there. We know the bulb's good. Um, I can prove that by just doing a, a quick continuity check actually, it'll probably be the easiest thing. There's our bulbs, that's good. So it goes to 12 volts. So I'm going to connect the bulb up, reconnect the bulb up, and hey, why is my light not coming on? Okay, I've, you know, I've checked, it's a new bulb, the bulb's okay, I know I've got 12 volts there. If you look now, and this is what most people don't do, or they, if they do, they're confused by this. Well, I've got no volts here, what, what's going on? So you disconnect the bulb again. Oh, 12 volts, what's, what's that? This is a, a, a something that's caught out a lot of people in the past, especially with automotive wiring and wiring that's exposed to sort of the elements and things like that. It doesn't have to be just automotive wiring, but it can be anything that's sort of liable to corrosion or, uh, or bad connections. What this problem is, as most of you of my followers will know, probably all of my followers will know, is a high resistance connection. The, the current capability of this, this lead is so low that it can't light the bulb up, which is basically what's happening. Is this is basically putting, this bulb is basically putting a short circuit on my headlamp supply. So when I connect that up, there's a short circuit. Now, there's a number of ways of uh, finding these things a little bit easier, and one of them is not to use a digital voltmeter. A digital voltmeter's got a very high input impedance of probably one mega ohm, so one million ohms per volt, so it's a very high resistance. It offers no resistance to the current. So basically what's happening is, even though we've got a, a very high series resistance, because the meter's such a low um, such a low load on it, it's still showing 12 volts. We're not offering any resistance to the current, basically. That's, the, I think, the easiest way to describe it. So, what to do? Well, I always suggest that if you, you're going to own a car and you're going to work on a car, you don't want a digital multimeter. Um, if you go on eBay, there are lots of cheap Chinese um, analog meters around, and analog meters have got a big advantage. They've got much lower uh, resistance. Therefore, they offer much more of a load to the circuit. And I'll show you why that's important now. I'm going to swap the Fluke with this lovely 1970s styled um, Lafayette uh, voltmeter. These uh, were quite a popular in the 70s and 80s. There, wasn't re there weren't any decent digital meters around in those days. Everything was analog, really. Uh, and these are plentiful on eBay. You just obviously have to be a little bit careful because you, you are working with a mechanical instrument. You can damage it if you have it on the wrong range. But as we're working with 12 volts today, we know that uh, we're going to, we want something that's not going to overload the, the, the ranges. So I'm on a 30 volt range. The next range down is six, it's no, obviously no good. So I'm on the 30 volt range. So 15 volts will be halfway up the scale. So I, I'm expecting to see the scale come to about here on the pointer if I've got 12 volts. So what I'll do is I'll connect my, my bulb up again. And of course, as we're putting an excess load on the circuit, we won't get anything on the meter. Right, now what I'll do is I'll disconnect one end of the, of the uh, bulb. Let's keep it constant, that one's just shot off. Disconnect that lead again. Now if you imagine now, we're getting some movement on the meter, 
but it's only going to about 5 volts. Okay, so what I'll do, and this is a good clue, if I turn it to the 6 volt range, I should be somewhere up here. Okay, so let's put it on the 5 volt range. Well, that's funny, I'll turn it to 6 volt range, why has it not got any higher? Okay, let's try 600 millivolts full range. Same, not changing, the range is, the, the meter's not going up any higher. But, that has shown and pointed out a problem. There's a problem with the wiring. Um, and with the digital meter, you, you would never spot that unless you had a bit of experience fault finding this before. And the reason why there's a problem with the wiring is, if you look back here, there's a 10 mega ohm resistor in series. Now, obviously you're not gonna have a 10 mega ohm resistor in series on a, a car or on anything that's sort of being wired up properly in the first place. But if you imagine that as a, an earth connection on a, a chassis or a wire that goes up to a relay, if that relay or wire has got a corrosion on it, it could easily become 10 meg. It's not necessarily going to be 10 meg, it could be 1k, it could be, it could be 100k, it could be totally open circuit. But with, a, with an analog meter, if you're supplying a load on that circuit, you will see that there is an, there is an open circuit and you, you'll see that there is a problem with the, uh, with, with the, with the supply. And with a digital meter, you can't see that. So what I'm saying is, if you're if you're working with automotive electrics, um, I strongly recommend you use an analog meter. And just to clear up the problem, we'll take the, the resistor out of the circuit. So we've repaired our we've repaired our circuit now. I'm going to check our 12 volts. There we go. Just about half scale reflection. We'll connect it up to the bulb. There you go. Our 12 volts. Still got the 12 volts there. It's working fine. So, really, um, not really electronics related, but um, I just thought it would be useful to uh, point this out that uh, it's worth getting an old meter like this. They're lovely old meters. This one, uh, this is one I picked up very cheaply. Uh, you can you can get them for next to nothing. Uh, it's probably sort of 10, 15 quid for a, a cheap Chinese one. Don't buy the cheapest, nicest one you can. Get one with a sort of like a, a, a 30 volt, 20 volt. Uh, range for automotive stuff. Um, this works on AC as well. The same thing with sort of like if you've got problems with wiring in a barn or something like that where you can't get the supply through and yet your voltmeter shows it has got uh, 240 volts coming through. Same thing, use an analog meter, put a bit of load on the circuit uh, and it might help you. Uh, a lot of head scratching and a, bit, a lot of confusion.